welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about perspective and drawing a room using a one point perspective grid. If this is your first time visiting, consider subscribing because I share videos every single Friday about drawing, painting and living the artistic life. Perspective is a fundamental and basic part of art. It doesn't really matter what kind of subject you plan on focusing on in the future, all kinds of artwork contain some kind of perspective to them. Although perspective may be more obvious in artworks that contain scenery to them, it is present everywhere, no matter if you're doing portraits, animals, still lifes, or whatever it may be. Next, I'm going to be walking you through a quick exercise of using a one-point perspective grid to draw 3D geometric shapes in it, and then we're going to be drawing a room. All right, guys, let's get into it. Okay, everyone, so to begin, I just want to quickly mention that if you feel like you don't have enough practice drawing basic 3D geometric shapes, you should definitely practice a little more before moving on because this next lesson is going to be very hard for you if you still don't know how to draw these. At this point, I'm going to show you how I draw a simple one-point perspective grid so that we can later on use it to draw some 3D geometric shapes in it. And after we complete this exercise, we're going to be using this same one-point perspective grid in order to draw the inside of a room. So this is what you do. You're gonna need a ruler for this, okay? I have by my side an eraser. I also have a sharpener because your lines are, your pencils are going to have to be nice and sharpened. And I also made sure to grab um, a pencil with a hard lead in it so that I am able to create um, lighter lines that I'm later going to erase. And a couple of pencils with softer lead in them so that I can later go over the shapes that I want to make more visible. Okay, so I'm going to take my pencil with harder lead and I'm going to just pick a point anywhere on my paper. This can be anywhere, it doesn't have to be in the middle, okay? Once you have your dot in the wherever you want, I'm going to start drawing my lines. And I'm going to make these lines as faintly as possible because as I said, this grid is going to be used to draw your shapes and then you're going to want to have your shapes be more visible than the grid. I'm very carefully drawing my lines from one side of the paper or one edge of the paper to the other making sure to go over that central dot. There is no specific amount of lines that you need to draw but just make sure that you're not left with large areas of paper with no lines in them because then you're not going to be able to use those areas. Okay, that's enough. So I'm left with something like this. And basically this is a one point perspective grid. This is the grid that is going to allow me to create an illusion of depth in my drawing. And pretty much it's just lines all converging in one central dot. And this dot is going to represent the vanishing point. The vanishing point is basically the point that is furthest away from us. So as things come towards the sides of the page, they're going to get closer and closer to us. We're gonna go ahead and start drawing those 3D geometric shapes on this grid. All right, so at this point, I'm going to switch over to my 3D, 3B pencil, sorry, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a simple, flat, two-dimensional rectangle anywhere on my paper, okay? I'm gonna go for this area right here. And I'm just being as straight as possible in my lines. Now, these are not completely straight. If you need to help yourself with a ruler, do it, okay? 
I just did it as carefully as I could. But basically, I have my flat two-dimensional shape right here. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the innermost corners of my shape, so this one and this one. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to connect the corner of my shape to my dot, to my vanishing point, okay? So I'm just gonna trace my line. I'm gonna leave it not completely touching my vanishing point. I'm gonna leave it a little bit off just because I like that effect more. But you can connect it all the way if you'd like. I'm gonna start again at the corner of my shape, align my ruler with my central dot or my vanishing point and a trace very carefully, okay? I'm going to close my shape right here and we have created a 3D geometric shape using the one point perspective grid. So I want to quickly mention something here. In order for your 3D geometric shape to be effective, you have to take into account right angles and parallel lines. If certain lines aren't parallel to each other, your shape is going to look off. In this case, make sure your vertical lines are parallel and your horizontal lines, which in this case are these, are also parallel. The lines that are diagonal have to all converge in the middle or in the dot. So make sure that you keep your lines parallel to each other, horizontal lines parallel, vertical lines parallel, okay? Be careful with that. So let's move on and create another shape. I'm gonna make a long rectangle right here, flat, two-dimensional, right here. So then I'm going to take my two corners, I'm gonna take my ruler again, align my ruler with my central dot, align my ruler with the corner of my shape, and draw that line until wherever I want it. I can stop here, I can stop here, I can stop all the way at the dot, it doesn't really matter, okay? But in this case, I'm trying to close my shapes at the end, so I am not going all the way to the vanishing point. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this corner, bring it all the way to wherever I'd like, and finally close my shape, making sure that the line that I draw in the back is as parallel as possible to these two lines, okay? Closing the shape. In the case of this shape, I didn't really have to pull out my ruler to draw these lines again, because as you can see, these lines were already included within the grid, so I just could have drawn over them if I wanted to. Some lines you're going to have to draw and include in your grid and other lines are just gonna be there already. So let's go ahead and do a third shape. In these two shapes, you see that you have two visible planes, but depending on the location of your shape within the grid, sometimes you're gonna have three visible planes. So check this out. Um, I'm gonna try to draw a cube if I can right here. Well, more like a rectangular prism because it's gonna be longer in the back. I'm gonna take this corner, this corner, and this corner. And again, I align my ruler to my central dot and the corner of my shape, and I bring my line down again. Corner of my shape, vanishing point, and bring the line down. Corner of my shape, vanishing point, and bring the line down. At this point, all I have to do is close my shape. So I'm gonna make sure that my line here, my vertical line, is parallel to this vertical line and this vertical line. So I close my shape. I'm going to create a horizontal line right here to close my shape, which should be as parallel as possible to this horizontal line and this horizontal line. So right here I'm going to close it. And there you can see that I am left with a 3D geometric shape with three visible planes. I am going to do another one. 
I'm gonna do one over here and let's see what happens. So what happens if I want to create an overlapping shape? This is what I'm going to show now. I'm going to draw another rectangular prism right here. In the case of this rectangular prism, it's going to be partially covering this one. So I created the same way my regular two-dimensional square. I'm going to take my three corners, align them to my central dot in my paper, and draw my lines the same exact way. Since it's covering up that shape in the back, I'm just gonna erase the part of that shape that we are covering. And there we go. At this point, I'm just going to close my shape. And there it is. This is how you use a one-point perspective grid to create 3D geometric shapes coming towards you. So I'm just gonna finish this up very quickly by adding some cross hatching in order to better see the three-dimensionality in these shapes. You can take the shading as far as you'd like, but here it is. Here's how you use the one-point perspective grid in order to draw 3D geometric shapes coming towards you. We're now moving on to drawing a room. All right, everyone, so now we're actually going to start with our room drawing. And of course, to begin with that, we need to create our one-point perspective grid 
but this grid is going to be slightly different from the grid that we created for the previous exercise. Reason being is the back wall of our room doesn't need to have any lines in it and you're going to see why later on. So here's what you do. To begin, you're going to start by drawing the back wall of your room. Okay, so the, the wall that is going to be directly in front of you, flat in front of you. Make sure that this back wall or this rectangle isn't a good size when related to your drawing space. You don't want it too small and you don't want it too big. This is what I con would consider a good size when related to this area that we have to draw on. If you make this back wall too large, your drawing is going to look like you're very close to your back wall and you're not gonna have enough space to draw anything on your walls. And if you draw your back wall too small, it's going to look like you're inside a very narrow hallway or something like that. So when you're drawing a room, try to keep it more or less in a good proportion when compared to your entire drawing area. So once you have this, you have to find the central point or your vanishing point within this back wall. Now I want you to notice that my back wall is not super centered, okay? It doesn't really matter if it's centered within your drawing space or not but you do have to make sure that you find the central dot within this rectangle to create your grid, if that makes any sense. So to do that, I'm going to align my ruler to the corners of my back wall, and I'm gonna make a very slight line right here in the center. I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side and draw another line right there. Where those two diagonals converge, is my vanishing point. Once I have this dot, I can start adding in the corners of my room. So you align your ruler to this central dot, align it to the corner of your rectangle, and pull your line out like this. Notice that I am not creating my line in this area because as I was mentioning before, you're not gonna need any grid lines here within this space. You would have to erase them later on. So what's the point, right? I align my ruler to my central vanishing point. I align it to the corner of my back wall and I pull my line out. So now I'm left with my floor, my side walls, and the ceiling of my room. At this point, what I'm going to start doing is adding in my grid lines along my walls, my floor, and my ceiling so that I can use these grid lines to add in my furniture or whatever I'd like to add to my room. I am making these lines much darker than how I would normally do them because I need you to see what I'm doing, but I do recommend drawing them as faintly and lightly as possible because you're gonna end up erasing a lot of them, okay? Okay, so at this point I am left with my grid lines in all of the areas that I need them and you can perfectly start visualizing here where my floor is, my walls are and my ceiling. So start thinking about what you're going to want to be adding to your room. You can add whatever you'd like. Personally, I'm gonna make sure to add at least a couple of pieces of furniture so that I can show you how whatever furniture you want to add in 3D can be added in with simple 3D geometric shapes that you can later turn into whatever furniture you'd like. Okay, so I'm going to start adding in the different things that I want to add to my room. And I'm going to start out by creating a window on this wall right here. And to do that, I'm going to use the lines 
that I have already created. So this is going to be the top of my window. Then I'm gonna bring down my vertical lines. And remember guys, vertical lines have to be parallel. Okay, you can take this corner of the room as a guide and whatever horizontal lines you create also have to be parallel. That's super important. But in terms of the slanted lines or the diagonal lines, they all have to converge in that central dot. So keep that dot there because it's gonna help you visualize where all of your slanted lines should go. I'm gonna close my window right here and I'm going to create that little window design thing. So that's my window. Now I'm going to add a rug here on the floor. To do that, I'm going to start with my horizontal line parallel to this horizontal line. And I want this rug nice and big. So I'm gonna close it all the way down here. There is my rug. shorter on this side so we keep things a bit more symmetrical there we go so there's my rug I am now going to be adding in a door and I'm going to add my door right here for my door I'm going to need a couple of vertical lines Try to use your logic when you're thinking about how big to draw your elements, okay? Just keep in mind that the things that are closest to you are going to be bigger than the things furthest away. So this seems like a good door size to me. So I'm also going to be adding a couple of light fixtures over here and I think I'm going to be adding the longer ones. So there's one and I'm going to add another one closer to us. I'm going to make this one slightly bigger than this one because this one is further away from us, right? So this one should, it would make sense to make this one larger. Okay, and after I finish this light fixture, I am going to start erasing these lines over here because I don't need them anymore. I'm trying to avoid my actual drawing. And I'm gonna leave them like this for now. Later on we can add as much detail as we'd like. By this point, I'm going to start adding in my three-dimensional furniture. So until now we have just used our lines and created flat shapes. But once you want to start adding in things like beds or shelves or desks or whatever it is, try to visualize those pieces of furniture as 3D geometrical shapes that you can later refine and modify and transform into whatever you want to transform. This is the point at which we're going to apply the skills that we previously practiced in our 3D geometric shape exercise. So I've decided that I'm going to add in a bed and probably some sort of shelf or drawer unit over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think of my bed as a rectangular prism that is going to be coming towards us. So my headboard is going to be placed on the back wall and it's gonna get bigger and bigger as it gets closer to us. 
So where the foot of the bed is, is gonna be closest to us and the headboard is gonna get further away from us, so smaller and smaller, right? In order to create a three-dimensional rectangular prism, I'm going to start out by visualizing or placing the front face of the rectangular prism right here, okay? The same way we created these shapes, by placing first this front face closest to us is the same way that we're going to start our bed. So I'm going to place the flat rectangle wherever I see fit and then I'm going to use this rectangle corner, corner and corner and connect these corners using this dot. All right. So this front face is going to be the foot of the bed and the headboard is going to be over here, right? Against this back wall. So I'm just going to at this point draw a headboard right here, the way I would imagine a bed to be. I can do whatever design I want at this point. And there's our bed. So I'm going to even add in a couple of little stubs over here to make it look more like a bed. I'm going to bring this down a bit. Okay, so it's a bit messy, but there's our bed. So do you see how I used a rectangular prism and turned it into a bed? Because that's really all I did. I visualized my bed as a 3D geometric shape and later on refined it and turned it into a bed. So now we're gonna do the same thing and we're going to place uh, some drawers over here, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start by placing the side of the shelf that is facing us first. I want the shelf to be nice and tall. I'm going to start by placing a flat two-dimensional rectangle right here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Are you starting to visualize how I'm going to turn this rectangular prism into my shelf? All I have to do now is create my shelf. There we go, there's my shelf. So what else can I add to my room? I'm gonna make a little table right here. I think that's an opportunity to create another 3D shape that is gonna make it look even more realistic. I'm 
I'm gonna make a short table right here. And I'm even going to add in a couple of little legs. There we go. So I'm nearly done with my drawing and I think I've added in all of the larger pieces that require the grid. At this point I'm just going to very carefully erase my grid lines because I don't really need them anymore. At this point I can also erase my dot over there on the back wall. And here is my room. At this point, I'm just gonna start adding in some value and stuff like that, little details. You can take this as far as you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and leave my room drawing like this, but you can take it as far as you'd like and do practice your 3D geometric shapes several times. Alright guys, that's it. There's my room. That's it for now everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what's difficult about perspective to you. And see you next week.